Hey guys, in this video, we are going to talk about the Singleton design pattern. So if you must have read books, blogs, or even watched videos on the Singleton design pattern, the concept is to restrict the creation of object to a single instance. That means whenever you have a class and you create the instance, you just require one single instance of that class. And that single instance would be called over all your application. So multiple objects would be calling that single instance. So as a developer, if you start thinking of examples, you would definitely find a lot of them. But the idea is, should we create singleton uh, classes? And if we do create singleton classes, where should they be utilized? So the reason of this video is to understand where this kind of a design is very useful. The first thing that you would definitely read is when you have to create your own logger. So let's say you have an application and you need to keep on writing logs, which might be of different uh, types. Like you want to write a debug log, warning, error, any, any kind of logs that you want to write. The reason for this is you don't want to create multiple instances of the same uh, object that does the same work uh, eating up all your memory, right? Another beautiful example of a singleton class is assume you have a game. In that game, uh, you have a game behavior class which drives the behavior of your game. Uh, you don't want multiple instances of that game behavior class, but a single instance would drive the whole game. Assume you have a state pattern also implemented where your game states like the menu state or the starting state or the ending state. These states are being controlled by the game behavior. So, you just want to have a single instance of that specific class. A couple of examples that I have also seen while implementing a couple of uh, libraries or extensions are uh, your MRTK has a single toolkit instance. Oculus has the OVR manager and a couple of more singleton classes. Then your Photon Engine, that definitely has a single instance. So from these, we learned that when you have your own framework or a library, you don't want multiple instances of that framework or library to be instantiated, right? Another such example is when you want to use uh, a text-to-speech or a speech-to-text kind of a library or a module. In this case, your API calls can be made from several different classes, but your main class or the class that does this kind of work does not need to be replicated or the objects do not need to be created. So the next example that we are going to take a look at is the very common one, which is the audio manager or the graphics manager. But what we are going to add to it is the input module. So assume you write a wrapper around various input modules and create your own input module that subscribe to a couple of events and other classes subscribe to this input module. So this is a perfect example of having a single class because you don't want multiple objects because that is just going to create a lot of confusion for the application and the subscribers and the raising of events is going to be really chaotic. So yet another example of such uh, design pattern implementation is when you have an application that has to communicate over the network or to the service layer or some other APIs on the cloud or databases, you just want to have it restricted to a single instance. Because if you create multiple instances of this class, then your application programming flow is going to be definitely chaotic. So one more example to add on to this is when you are doing some performance optimizations and are you know, relying on a lot of data structures, you might just want to uh, you know, create a pool of objects where, or which is taken care by a tree uh, kind of a data structure and you want to keep on adding objects to it or keep on removing objects from the same and you can definitely keep it restricted to one single instance. So with that said, we have looked at a lot of examples. Uh, there is one pretty interesting example from the game that I play often, which is the flight simulator. And the example is of a flight management system. So now imagine if you have multiple flight management systems, definitely your flight is not going to be that smooth, right? So a lot of theory here, and I think it's time to dive into the code where I'm just going to give you a little bit brief of how you can create the singleton uh, classes. 
So here we are going to take a look at a very basic implementation of a singleton uh, design pattern for creating a logger. Before we jump into the code, just a quick recap on the examples where we can implement singleton. Uh, the first one is for controlling the application states. Then second one is input modules or teleportation modules. Then we have controllers, handlers, managers, like audio graphics network, singleton instance libraries like MRTK, Oculus, Photon, etc. Uh, file IO wrappers or extensions, application logging, performance optimizers, uh, data managers, um, or your uh, FMS radio controls and items. So many more examples to this, but let's take a look at how we can quickly create a class. So here we have a simple logging utility. And to make sure that we always return one single instance, we have to make a variable static. So here we have uh, basically a private instance, and then we have the public instance of that static variable. So if you see this code clearly, we only have a getter, which means we are not allowed to set the value for this instance. But if the m instance variable is null, then we'll create a new logging utility and we will return the same instance. So whenever there is an object uh, which requires to get the instance of this, it will lazy load this class, which means it will not load this class at the beginning, but whenever the first instance is called, it will initialize this class and uh, it will create uh, or occupy the memory. So here we have just added a simple Boolean to enable logging. And we have two functions for logging information and logging warning. So with that said, our simple singleton implementation is done. Now let's take a look at how it can be utilized. I have made a couple of classes and I have utilized the singleton instance by calling the logutil.instance. Now you remember the instance variable is static. That means logutil class is static uh, variable has been called here and we are going to log information. So, so here we are just uh, logging the information saying that the vehicle instance is created with the specific name. And when it is destroyed, we are logging same, some more information. Same with the machine class and the NPC class. All right. So now we have a basic idea of how uh, singleton classes are created and can be utilized. Let's take a look at how singleton classes are created in Unity. So here we have the application manager class, which is a mono behavior because I want one instance to be attached to the game object. Uh, if you see that I have commented a lot of code, that is because this is how a usual implementation would be. But when we are going to create a mono behavior class, it's going to be fairly simple. So what happens is, as we have seen, we already have a static member which is the instance and it is public. We don't require a private instance here. See, so what's happening here is we are 100% making sure that this script is applied on one of the game objects and whenever the script is instantiated or the awake method is called, which is the very first method in the life cycle, we are making sure that this is going to be the instance that is always going to be referred to. If this is not the instance, then we are going to destroy it. Also to note that we are going to make sure that we are not going to destroy this because we want to keep it available across multiple scenes. Okay. So now that the app manager is created, we are going to take a look at Unity and how it is used. Okay, so this is the Unity scene and we have a camera, a dash and light. We have three application managers and all three have the app manager script applied. This is because we want to check which instance prevails and follows a singleton design pattern. To do that, I have given a different value for each application manager. So let's quickly start the game. So the application manager one prevails. The application manager two and three have no application manager script attached to it, which means the instances for that application manager have been destroyed properly. 
Now I'm just going to press the escape button. So we have the settings menu showed up on the screen and I can keep on pressing the escape button to toggle between the settings. All right, so now that we know that the application manager is always giving us a single instance, I just wanted to show you that I have for now added an action called on pause game. And whenever I'm hitting the escape button, I'm raising this event. So here we have the setting script. In this script, we are going to set the visibility of the canvas on and off. So on enable, we are subscribing to the on pause game action. And on disable, we are unsubscribing from it. The method basically just activates or inactivates the UI. So this is a very basic example and we can also pause the game time. So if you recollect the settings UI, we have four volume controls that the user can tweak. The first one is the master volume. Then we have machine volume, vehicle volume, and NPC volume. So this kind of an example is to give you an idea as to how a singleton class can be utilized to control various uh, parameters of the same feature. So this, the feature here is a sound control. So for that, we have created an audio manager. So the audio manager is a simple singleton class. It is not a mono behavior class, and it has the singleton implementation by creating two static variables. One is the private instance variable, and another is a public instance variable, which has a getter. And if it's null, it creates a new audio manager instance. Now, the most important part is these actions. So what happens is whenever the user tweaks the volume, the settings class is going to raise an event of that specific uh, volume slider with the specific slider value. So the user can uh, change multiple uh, types of volumes here or sounds. Also note that for updating the master volume, which is the audio listener's volume, we don't need to create a separate event, uh, raise that event, and then attach another method that can definitely be handled by this audio manager class. So now I have created three major types of uh, classes, which is your machine, vehicle, and NPC. So here in the machine class, it is derived from the base object. This base object class basically has an array of various audios. It also has an audio source. Now this it also has a virtual uh, update volume method, which takes in a value and updates the volume of this audio source. So, uh, we will check that implementation in the specific classes. So if you see this machine prefab, which has a machine script, it has four audios that we are taking from uh, the project. And randomly on start, we are assigning one audio to its audio source. Similarly, we have the NPC and we have the vehicle. So whenever these objects are spawned, we are making sure that a random audio is being applied. This is a common functionality and hence it is kept in the base object class. Now your machine, vehicle and NPC scripts are derived from the base object class. On awake, we are basically logging using our logger utility that an instance of this specific class is created. Whenever the object is destroyed, we are also logging that the object instance has been destroyed. So here comes the interesting part. When the object is instantiated in the start method, we are subscribing to the audio manager's update machine audio in the machine class. In the vehicle class, we are subscribing to update vehicle audio. And in the NPC class, we are subscribing to the update NPC audio. Note that we are subscribing using the same method that is provided in the base class, which is called update volume. Now you see that when the functionality is same, we can keep them in one single class and derive multiple classes from it. So we are definitely going to discuss about all these things in the next upcoming design conference. Also to note that whenever an object is destroyed, we are first subscribing from the audio manager's specific uh, update uh, audio events. Okay, so we are in the game now and uh, we'll just check our console window. 
it has about five instances of machines created, four instances of vehicle created, and one instance of an NPC created. So if you just quickly go to the game objects that have been spawned, we have machine. And if you see the audio source, random audio has been assigned to machines. Similarly, this is for the vehicles. And for the NPC also, the audio has been assigned. Right now, I have muted the master volumes and all the other volumes. So let's check all the volumes one by one. So first of all, I'm going to increase the master volume. And because all three objects have the volume toned down to zero, we are not able to hear any of these. So first of all, I'm going to increase the volume for the NPC. And you see there is some background noise that can be heard. Then we can add some vehicle volume. And then some machines. And we can also control the master volume. So this is a very simple way of implementing an audio manager. Now, in the next further videos, we are going to talk about uh, static versus singleton because it's, as I said, it's a diligent call that you make to use a singleton uh, or a static class. Okay. And uh, we are going to talk about the specific differences in the upcoming videos. So I hope these examples were helpful for you. And please let me know uh, how you like the videos and do uh, drop in some comments. Uh, also, please let me know which design pattern should we uh, take up next. Uh, you can mention that in the comments. Thank you so much for watching the video.